Our guests are Sarah Burns, who is the director of this remarkable new film called The Central Park Five. Um, we are also joined by the former New York Daily News reporter Natalie Byfield, who was there in 1989 in the newsroom um, when the attack on uh, Patricia Miley took place. Uh, she wasn't named for years, but she was the investment banker, the 28-year-old woman, a white woman who was raped in Central Park. And we're joined by Raymond Santana. Raymond, before I ask about your experience, in this excerpt from the Central Park Five documentary, two of the defendants, um, uh, Kevin Richardson and you, Raymond Santana, describe how defectives tr detectives tried to play them against each other during their separate interrogations. It got to one point where they pulled me, used the intro in the conference room, and the lawyer says, uh, you know, we're going to lose this case. What we're planning to do is see if we can get you a plea deal. And I remember telling them, you know, you guys can cop out, but if I did something, I would cop out. I would want the least amount of time for what I did. But if I didn't do anything, you can give me the rest of my life in prison. You know, I didn't know what that meant back then, but I just knew that there would be no way that I would cop out to something that I didn't do. They said, well, it has to be all three of you guys or it's nobody. That was Raymond Santana and Yusuf Salam, another of the Central Park Five. Now let's go to this next clip. Hardigan sat down and he said, look, Ray, I know you didn't do anything wrong, but the other guys right now, they're in other precincts and they're saying that you did it. And they're telling me, well, you're not saying nothing, but these guys put your name in it. And I'm like, I didn't do anything. And he's like, well, this is why I'm here to help you, because I know you didn't do anything. You were a good kid. You know, this isn't you. He pulls out this picture of Kevin Richardson, and he goes, you know this kid? And I'm like, no, I don't know him. And he goes, you see the scratch under his eye? That came from the woman. We know he did it. He's going down. At this point, I'm like, you know, I don't know these, these guys that's, that's there, so I'm just going to make up something and, and include these guys' names. Okay. If, if, you know, if you're going to do it to me, then I'm going to do it to you. That's Raymond Santana in the film and Kevin Richardson. Raymond, you were 14 years old, and so was Kevin. Yes, that's correct. They, the police, where were your parents? Were they in the room? Did you have a lawyer? No, I didn't have a lawyer at that time. And my grandmother was present. But, uh, uh, you know, one of the police tactics that were used against us was they would pull out the room. And, you know, and they would talk to her in the hallway. And as they talked to her in the hallway is when they started to really get aggressive towards me and uh, use, you know, that, some of those tactics that we talked about in the film. Yeah. And what happened once you, once you got out? Once you got out of prison, I mean, you were you stayed in prison, and then after that, you, the sentence was only overturned uh, uh, once you were out, and then you were back in prison yes. afterwards. Can you talk about the the narrative? Explain what. Well, happened. what happened was once I came home, you know, from serving uh, the prison so prison term. How many years did you serve? I served seven, almost seven years, mm -hmm. and so what happened was that you know I tried to get my life back together and uh, and put one foot in front of the other, but I didn't you know I didn't realize the social death that we were given as a sentence. You know, um, you know, this wasn't a five to fifteen, a five to ten, this was a this was a, a, a life sentence, a death sentence in a sense, because you know, when I came home I couldn't get employment. Um, you know, I uh, uh, I I tried out filled out numerous applications and you know, I had to register as a sex offender. You know, my whole neighborhood looked at me, you know, you know, kinda strange, you know, you know, you get the high how you doing but, you know, you always had that bullseye in the back, you know, that says, you know, some way, somehow, I'm, I'm Raymond Santana from the Central Park Jogger case. You know, my family shunned away from me, um, so I felt I was all alone. I had, you know, there was no way I could turn. There was no uh, uh, transitional, transitional programs for me to come back into society into and so and be productive. And so I crashed, and I didn't know what to do. And I turned back to crime, and I started selling, you know, I started selling drugs. 
and I got charged and I got arrested and I was charged with criminal possession with the intent to distribute. Now, you wouldn't have been in jail that long except that you had this case before. That's correct. This case that you ultimately were wrongly imprisoned for. I have a connection to this case because a woman in my apartment building was the last one raped um, by Matias Reyes, yes. the man, and he was caught by our doorman yes. um, as he tried to race out of the building. This is the man who would later testify that he did the rape and, of course, the DNA matched and everything. Where were you when you heard the news that you were being exonerated and you would be released, that the real rapist of Patricia Miley had come forward? I was in Franklin, Franklin Correctional Facility in Malone County, which is about eight to nine hours away from New York City. And, uh, 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 you know, and, and, and previously before that, I was in Downstate Correctional. And that's where I actually got the news. You know, I called my dad. And uh, and uh, and he told me that Reyes had came forward, and I didn't believe him. I was so institutionalized by that that point that I just felt that Morgan Thorpe and the DA's office would just sweep it under the rug. They would try to make him the sixth man, and I would just go to the grave with this label of the Central Park Jog Central Park Five on my back. So you sued along with the other uh, men yes. um, who are now men. You were boys then. You were 14 years old yes. when this all started. It's 20 more than 20 years later. What's happened? Well, you know, um, you know, right now we, we, we're currently in depositions, uh, you know, with uh, you know, with no end in sight. Uh, the city loves to use these tactics against us. Sarah Burns has asked for outtakes of your film. Yes, yes. they services with a subpoena a couple months ago, asking for initially everything we'd collected: notes, outtakes, footage, everything. Um, and we, when we pushed back, they responded with a new subpoena that was narrowed somewhat. Um, but we feel that we're protected by the shield laws for journalists, and so we filed a motion to quash the subpoena. You've spoken with Trisha Miley? I did speak with her early on in the process of the book. I obviously wanted to, to hear what she had to say about it. What does she it. say about these men? Now that it is absolutely confirmed that um, uh, Matthias Race was the rapist, he'd used this MO over and over again? She doesn't really comment on it. Um, she chose at that time not to participate in the book or the film project, and um, you know she she wrote her own book uh, that was published in 2003 about her recovery from what was not only a brutal a rape but also a traumatic brain injury, and so she was not expected to live. She was in a coma for nearly two weeks um, and really made a miraculous recovery, and so she sort of focused more on that part of her story and has really uh, declined to talk about this question that was later raised about what actually happened. Well, we will continue this conversation um, and post it online at democracynow.org. Um, a remarkable film, Sarah, is opening around the country now. Sarah Burns is the director, together with her father, Ken Burns. Natalie Byfield, the reporter, Raymond Santana, the prisoner now freed. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Shake. This is Demo Thanks so much for watching this report from Democracy Now!, your daily independent global news hour. We don't accept advertising or corporate funding, but rather rely on donations from viewers like you. Please make your contribution by visiting democracynow.org. We need your support today to keep bringing you this hard-hitting, in-depth reporting.